Hi guys, today is December 16th. Just like I talked about last episode, the deal with Brittany Kramer was not only the only WNBA trade we knew about, but also the worst one. Also in the news, we have Lauren Boa winning her re-election bid. And finally, we have Sam Bankman Freed worried that his arrest and criminal charges would mean that he cannot start another business and he would quote, give anything to start another business. You are watching the Demetrius Arujo Show and I'm your host, Demetrius Arujo. Without further ado, let's begin. I got facts over facts over tracks, this and that, spitting slow, spitting fast, I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past. Okay, so let's dig into two people that you might have heard of before. One person we're going to be talking about is Mark Bogle. He is 61 years old, and his case sounds a lot like Brittany Grammer's story. According to Politico, and I quote, a history teacher from Pennsylvania who lived in Russia while teaching at the Angelo American School in Moscow, was taken into custody by Russian authorities in August 2021 after customs officials at a Russian airport discovered around half an ounce of medical marijuana smash, stashed into his luggage. Now, the only difference physically between him and Grammer is that he was medically prescribed that weed from a doctor, while Grammer was just using it leisurely. Now, I say physically because there's a lot of other issues going on here, like that she's a POC and that she's a lesbian and that she's a woman, but you know, we won't talk about that. He is still serving time in Russia to this day. So if the United States cared about bringing back people that were serving time in Russia unfairly, then Biden and his team would have traded the merchant of death for both of them, not just one of them. Now, this, surprisingly, was not the only trade deal that was at the behest of the United States. In 2009, under the Obama administration, a person named Bali Bergil was fighting in Afghanistan when he left his post for no reason at all. Because of this, a search team had to go out and try to recover him and to make sure that he was alive. This, called, this caused soldiers to get wounded and get caught by the Taliban. Because he was caught, the military wanted to trade 15 prisoners for him, but the Taliban declined because of the fact that they knew that he was more valuable than those 15 prisoners, or so they thought. Because of the fact that he was obtained, he needed to serve five years under this Taliban. And finally, he came out with this video and his health was deteriorating, so Obama traded five prisoners for this release, but was charged with desertion and misbehavior before an enemy, which ultimately resulted in him forfeiting $1,000 a month from his salary for 10 months and a demotion to private. He was a sergeant, by the way. I guess Joe Biden still has Obama politics in his ear because these trade deals just keep getting worse and worse. Without further ado, let's get into the headline of the week. Since, two, since 2020, there has been a problem that is not getting enough attention from this administration than it needs. This is something that this administration would rather just pretend that doesn't exist than try to fix the problem at hand. And that problem is the border. We have over 1,500,000 single adults encountered at this border in 2022 alone. That's not only what we have encountered, but the real number is way more than that. But we don't know and there is no way to actually tell how many exact amount of border crossers there are because of the fact that that is encountered. Now, these people can go unencountered. That is something that they do quite frequently. But what we do know is that the problem is only getting worse and worse under Joe Biden. And nobody wants to realize that in this administration, at least. Fox News and other conservative media outlets, of course, recognize that. This rose 470%. That's four times as much as it was in 2020 when Joe Biden first took office. We now know that this administration doesn't want to acknowledge that the border is a poop show, sprayed with Febreze to cover up the smell. Now, without further ado, let's get into a dozen takes. Digging right in, we have an article from CNN. First on CNN, Biden administration to pilot new portions of citizenship test next year. Now, the thing is that, like we just talked about, there is a immigrant crisis, not only immigrant, but border crossing crisis. Now, some people are saying that we 
do not even have space for our own citizens in the United States. So why would we allow thousands and millions of other people from other countries to come into here? Now, of course, they're going to be talking about all of these things that these immigrants can do to gain citizenship. Now, citizenship is good because we don't want these immigrants being illegal. But the thing is that they're going to acknowledge this, that we need to get these immigrants on the citizenship because of the fact that they know that their policies is exactly what brought them into the country in the very first place. And these immigrants know exactly this. The immigrants know the reason why they're here in the very first place is because of the Democrats. The Democrats know this and they're trying to use these immigrants as a buying tactic for votes. That's exactly what they want to do. They know that since these immigrants are coming in, they're going to vote Democrat most likely because of the fact that they are inviting these people into the United States in the very first place. So obviously, if you have a host of the party, you're going to like the part, the host of the party, if they're throwing a very good party for you. So moving in with the article, we have CNN. The Biden administration plans to conduct a trial for portions of a of the naturalism exam, which immigrants must pass to become United States citizens next year to try to make the test more accessible. The United States Citizenship and Immigration Services will announce on Wednesday. The naturalism exam is a crucial step to an immigrant's path toward the United States citizenship, potentially impacting hundreds of thousands of immigrants who seek citizenship annually. President Joe Biden signed an executive order at the start of this administration that included a, de a decorative to a directive to review the English and civics test for naturalization. Wednesday's announcement is a result of that order. The ch this trial will include changes to the English speaking component of the test, which is not standardized in the civics component following a review by the USCIS subject matters experts. According to the agency, the two other parts of the exam, reading and writing, are already standardized and will remain unchanged. Quote, One thing we heard a lot and agreed with is that we need a standardized speaking portion to the same extent we standardize reading and writing, a U.S. CIS official told CNN, noting that otherwise the that part of the exam can be subjective and vary depending on the interviewing officer. officer. The hope the official added, is to encourage a conversation that reflects what people are likely to talk about and gauging their English-speaking skills. Now, this is a very, very good thing that they used to do. I mean, the thing is that you should speak English to, to actually get your citizenship of the United States because of the fact that the majority of the citizens in the United States speak English. So if you don't even at least know English, then who are you going to talk to? How are you going to talk to these people even and the officers interviewing you to be a citizen of the United States, if you can't even speak a little bit of English. My grandparents came from Greece to the United States, and they could speak a little bit of English, enough to get through the test, and they passed the test. So it's just, what are you, what are you guys doing over here in CNN? They just, they just want more and more people that are immigrants to vote in our elections because of the fact, like I talked about before, that's buying the votes. Now, Moving on to our next article we have from CNN, we have Inside Biden's decision to take a deal that freed Brittany Grimer, but left Paul Willen in Russia. So Paul Grillen is actually the person I was talking about before that had medical prescribed marijuana for a clinically chronic pain in his back. That's exactly why he had the marijuana there. Now, if I do say so myself, Brittany Grammer actually looks a lot like Pete Davidson, and I was talking about this on Twitter, follow me here. Washington, CNN, President Joe Biden had already personally informed Charlie, um, Charlotte Griner that her wife was being released from Russia detention. While aides arrived with more news, Brittany Grammer was now secretly out of Russia and on the telephone. It's Joe Biden, the president said on the call was, that was patched through. Welcome, welcome home. So I can just imagine Joe Biden saying this, like, it's Joe Biden. Welcome. Welcome home. Like, it's just so stupid. Like, how dumb do you have to be? You're like 90 years old. You're talking to this person that's probably like dirty. I mean, I never I never saw one WNBA match with her. So I actually don't know her age. I don't really know anything about her before this event. But the thing is that you're talking to this person. It's Joe Biden. Like, ew, what are you doing? 
you're the president. How about you start off by saying, congratulations, we have unlocked you from the detention in Russia. We have chose you over this other person here, and we just traded you, so you should actually like your country now because we know that you did not like your country before, but no. Welcome, welcome home is the only thing that Joe Biden can say over here. Nearly 10 months after Brittany Grammer was arrested at Moscow Airport, the jubilant moment in the Oval Office on Thursday amounted to the criticism culmination of prolonged frustrating negotiations and one painful decision that left another detained american disappointed and wondering what his fate may be well duh because he's been there for the last couple years how about you wait your turn Brittany grammar you were just arrested 10 months ago maybe even seven months ago i don't know exactly what how many months ago you were but the thing is that this this uh, other this paul woolen guy was arrested on espionage charges in 2018 and sentenced to 16 years in prison. So it's like, what are you, what are you guys doing? Like you, you do the other, you do the other guy first, obviously. But now the whole entire media as a whole, CNN, NFSNBC, CBS, all these people are, are saying, no, but it wasn't a decision on the president. It was actually Putin telling us we can either have one or none. Who's Putin to tell us? How about we tell him, how about you do what we tell you or you get nobody? We're having an active, one of our, one of the people that we're donating billions of dollars to you is actually, um, you're our enemy. You do not tell us what to do. And if you don't want to cooperate with us, we're just going to keep your prisoner and bye. If you don't, if you don't have any other options for us, bye. I'm not trading one person for the merchant of death. That's what Joe Biden should have said. Now, moving on to the next article, we actually have an MSNBC article. The headline is, Trump sheds GOP's Brittany Grimer grapes with Paul Ryan rant. So, Republicans have tried to make a scandal out of Joe Biden agreeing to a prisoner swap last week that resulted in a release of the WNBA star Brittany Grimer from a Russian captivity. Okay, star. WNBA star. You can't be a star if only 10 people know wh who your name is. I, it just doesn't make any sense. Let's let them tell it. They are out, they were outraged with some ch claiming the deal to trade Russian arms dealer Victor Boot, who was about halfway through serving his 25 year year sentence for grammar, amounted to an impeachment level offense. Now the thing is, yes, I do think that you should be impeached, but not only because of this, but for other things as well. Many of them also claimed Biden's inability to secure the release of another prisoner, former United States Marine Paul M Merlin, amounted to a betrayal. It was a betrayal because he served time for us, the United States, and now you're going to betray him for some stupid WNBA player that doesn't even like the United States in the very first place. Over this person that served the United States, how disrespectful can you be? Woolen is serving a 16-year sentence in a Russian penalty, penal colony for espionage charges, both he and the United States deny. Rep. Mergie Taylor Greene of Georgia was one of the Republican voices calling for the Biden's impeachment. Her lapdog, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, said leaving Paul Woolen behind was an unconscionable consumable act by Biden. Well, yeah, duh. You just... You just had this person that was in jail for the last couple of years since 2018. That's what, three years now? Since 2018? No, that's actually five years sitting in prison. And then Brittany Grimer comes over here 10 months ago, arrested because of the something that she actually did. That's not medical prescribed. That's for leisure prescribed. Oh my God, I can't. Even Donald Trump, who publicly ignored Willen's pleas to negotiate his release during his presidency, has the nerve to call Biden's deal an un patriotic embarrassment last week it is an embarrassment check out this post i wrote nobody cares about your post it just really is disgusting to me that people can't do the math and realize that trump was a president when paul was arrested and that he was a president for the next two years elizabeth willen said well the thing is that did he have this opportunity to actually do this trade deal with russia no russia didn't say yeah let's negotiate a deal no they said no we're not trading anybody for that that's it so what do you what point are you trying to make? Quote, I don't think President Trump ever even said Paul's name. Yeah, because he probably didn't even know who he was. You think he ex you you expect him to know every single imprisoned citizen of the United States overseas? No, he doesn't. 
We don't even know who Grimer was 10 seconds ago. And what do you know? Like clockwork, Trump delivered one of his infamous online shreds and showed how baseless all this right-wing rage truly was. It's not baseless. It's the fact that we had this person in jail for five years and Brittany Grimer, just because she's a POC, just because she's a lesbian and just because she's a woman, is put to the front of the line and said, no, we need to get you out of here immediately. We're going to get you home. We're going to get you home, Brittany Grimer. And then she shakes hands with the merchant of death. Just before this event, Joe Biden actually said that he needs to crack down on the guns. He needs, oh, this gun violence is unacceptable. And then you're going to go and unlock the merchant of death who trained people in Africa with guns to kill as many people as they possibly could. Are you really going to make this this um this trade deal, Joe Biden? Like it doesn't make any sense. In a post to his social media platform on Sunday, Trump claimed that as president, he turned down Russia's offer for a one-to-one -one swap that would have brought Wellen home in exchange for a boot. Here's his full statement. I turned down a deal with Russia for a one-on-one -on -one swap for the so-called merchant of death for Paul Wong. Woolen. And I, I wouldn't have made the deal for a hundred people in exchange for somebody who has killed untold numbers for people with his arms deals. I would have gotten Paul out. However, just as I did with the record number of other hostages, the deal for Grammar was crazy and bad. The taking wouldn't have ever happened during my administration, but if it did, I would have gotten her out fast. Um, so I think that he just put up a good point. I mean, the thing is that he does not want the Merchant of Death freed at all. You're making this this um, point, MSNBC, but you're making this point very, very bad. Like I said, for the last couple of weeks, you have a square peg and you're forcibly putting it with a jackhammer through the circle square, the circle peg. You're not, it's not working in your favor at all. You're just making yourself look stupid. And it's not a good look, MSNBC. So the thing is that yes, the merchant of death is the merchant of death, and we need to acknowledge that the merchant of death killed many, hundreds of people. So the thing is that he does not want to make the trade with anybody. It does not matter who you are. That's a distinction that he's making. As always, we can't assume anything Trump says is true, but either way, this is one hell of an administration. Trump isn't just saying that he declined to bring Wellen home, having the chance to do so. He's openly saying that he would let 100 Americans lavish in Russian prison to keep Bell locked up boot locked up despite the fact that he was scheduled for a release in 2029 okay and what's your point he served his sentence in the united states by 2029 for the wreck for the record the judge who sentenced bill believes the time he served behind bars was sufficient and trump who negotiated a deal with the taliban that led to thousands of fighters being freed from prison is in no position to condemn anyone for allegedly dangerous prison releases, but his unhinged rant unintentionally exposed purposely, purposely outraged political re Republicans as fraud. And for that, I'm thankful. Wow, you're so thankful. You end that off with that. Jan Jones, okay, what are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, Jan Jones, a writer for the MSNBC, what are you, what point are you trying to make? You're like making five different points that are just, you're trying to throw anything against the wall that will stick. It's not sticking. Listen, let's break this point um, piece by piece, right? So we can't always assume that anything Trump says is true, but either way, this is one hell of an administration. Yeah, it is. Trump did a lot of good things for America. Trump isn't just saying that he declined to bring Wellen despite having the chance to do so. No, he's not claiming that because of the fact that he did not want to because the merchant of the death is the merchant of the death. Merchant of death killed thousands of people. So why would you trade that for one person? It doesn't make any sense. He openly saying that he would let hundreds of Americans lavish in Russian prison to keep boat locked up. Yeah, he's also saying that while sim um, simultaneously making the claim that he also let hundreds of people out of prisons in overseas countries. Did you actually pay attention to that statement? If you're making everything that he said a, a fact, I mean, even though I don't know exactly if this is true or not, but if you're making everything that he says true, then you have to acknowledge that he did say that he just set a record number of other hostages out of those hostage situations. Hmm? Are you gonna Are you going to talk on that? No, you're not going to talk in that because it doesn't help your case at all. Jan, whatever the hell your name is, 
Jan Jones, MSNBC over there. Okay, so now um, I think we, this is just a video I, I put over here. I don't know why I put a video. Let me just, yeah, I put a video over here, but I don't know why I put a video over here. But the thing is, the good, the thing is that soccer writer Grant Wall's cause of death at the World Cup last week was a erotic aneurysm, his wife says, according to a new Washington Post report. So if for those of you that did not watch the World Cup, which is probably a lot of people, if you did not watch the World Cup, the announcer that went to the event actually he was wearing a of a, a LGBTQ flag on his shirt and they did not let him in. And he said, how dare you guys discriminate me based off of what I'm wearing? And if you go back on his tweets, you can actually see that he was wearing a mask during 2020. And he said, how dare you for not wearing a mask? You should be rejected restaurants and you should be rejected retail stores and you need to wear a mask, blah, 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 all the Karen stuff, right? He said this, but now two years later, he would like to make the claim that you cannot reject somebody based off of what they're wearing because he's wearing an LGBTQ shirt and where they're holding the World Cup, they do not accept gay people. So why are you going to make this this um, point while at the same exact time contradicting yourself? Because of the fact that they don't care that they're contradicting themselves. They don't care that they look like a hypocrite. They don't care that they look stupid. All they care about is a virtue signaling. All they, they care about is getting the clicks and the likes and the, and the shares. That's all they care about in getting that promotion at the end of the day. That's all they care about. They don't care about anything else, okay? That's exactly why. Moving on to the next article we actually have from NPR, we have, let's see here. This could be some of the reasons DeSantis hasn't announced a presidential run yet. That's exactly what they say. So in Florida, Republican Governor Ron DeSantis, who run, who won re-election by a wide margin, re reinforcing, reinforcing his position as a strong con counter for the party's political nomination in 2024. But DeSantis isn't showing signs that he is already officially ready to announce his candidacy. He says he's focused on governor on being governor and dismiss and dismisses questions about um, presidential ambitions. But for anybody that looks, there are some obvious signs that he is preparing to run. He has a autobiography titled The Courage to Be Free due to its due to be released early next year. The publisher's press release says that it's the story of a governor who has, quote, fought and won battle after battle, defending not just opposition from the political left, but a barrage of hostile media coverage proclaiming the end of the world. DeSantis raised more than $200 million for his re-election of four governor, including $10 million in a single donation from a Las Vegas real estate developer, much more than he needed. He currently has at least $90 million in the bank, and he still has funding and is still fundraising. His immense, immense campaign fund helped him beat his Democratic challenger, Charlie Crist, by nearly 20 points. Now, I don't think that it was just pure advertising. I think that it was him as a person that won that, but NPR go off. As a result, as recent news at a recent news conference, DeSantis said, We really showed, I think, how it's been how it's done in the Florida in the state of Florida, and went on to say that he received the highest percentage for a vote for a GOP governor in the history of Florida. Actually, Florida's first Republican governor, Harrison Reed, was re-elected by a wi wider margin during the reconciliation, reconstitution, const reconstruction era. But DeSantis' overwhelmingly victory, DeSantis's overwhelmingly overwhelming victory, sent a strong signal that Florida, once considered the nation's largest swing state, is now firmly in the Republican column. Republican media consultant. Gallerino Sopo says DeSantis' commanding victory strengthens his appeal. He knows how to really excite Republican voters while also drawing independents and moderate Democrats into the party, Sopo says. Others point to the lackluster turnout by Democrats as a major factor in Ron DeSantis' big margin of victory. Here are some of the possible reasons why DeSantis hasn't announced a run for president yet. Reason number one, if DeSantis 
decides to run for president while remaining governor, it will likely it will likely require a change to Florida law. Florida currently says state office holders must resign their positions if they run for a federal office, but Republican lawmakers, including state Senate President Kalim Pasamo, says don't worry about the law. The legislative will appear it, appeal it. When you think about it, Pasadamo recently told reporters, if an individual who is a Florida governor is resin- running for president, he should be allowed to do it. As a, pe- as a possible Republican presidential candidate, DeSantis has a strong conservative track record. He tapped into public frustrations with COVID-19 and led the fight against vaccine and mask mandates. He promoted parental rights and signed into law restrictions on how race, sexual orientation, and gender identity are discussed in the schools. And he also approved a law banning abortions after 15 weeks. That's a start. These policies have made him a regular on Fox News, boosting his name recognition among Republican voters nationally. Some recent polls show him more popular with Republicans than Donald Trump. Trump, who's already announced he's running, has noticed he said that it will be a mistake for DeSantis to enter the race. He's already tried to attack a line labeling Ron DeSantis. DeSantis has largely avoided commenting on the attacks, dismissing them as one news conference as just noise. He rarely mentions the former president now, a far cry from his last election, where he ran a campaign ad in which he read Trump's art of the deal to his infant son. He wants to be kind of the Trump policy without all the unhinged commentary in the Twitter warfare and personal attacks, says the University of North Florida political scientist Michael Binder. DeSantis is very much interested in Trump supporters, Binder says, and I think he found himself a very nice niche there. Reason number two, Binder expects DeSantis won't officially enter the Republican presidential context anytime soon. One reason is that he soon, as soon as he does, it will most likely spark an open warfare warfare with Trump. As governor, DeSantis can largely ignore Trump while he also asking, telling donors in traveling to states with early 2024 primaries. University of Florida political scientist Michael Dick McDonald says he sees DeSantis focusing on issues, not pol- personal attacks, taking a page from the guy who beat Trump. It was Sloppy Joe. McDonald says using <laughs> it was, quote, Sloppy Joe. That's funny. McDonald says using Trump's nickname for the president and DeSantis is in some ways is fashion fashioning himself out of mold of Sloppy Sleepy Joe Biden. Sloppy Joe. I said Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe for both of those times that they mentioned Joe Biden. So somebody's, somebody who's not throwing firebombs, someone who is just more focused on policy. As popular governor in the third largest state, DeSantis has a lot going for him, but running for president would put him in the spotlight. In University of North Florida, Binder says there's still a lot of unknowns about DeSantis. He hasn't been great on a debate stage, Binder says. He isn't a particularly comfortable political attacker in the sense of a small group, hand-to-hand shaking of the hands on the lines. What? Hand-to-hand shaking of the hands on the lines. What are you talking about, NPR? He doesn't thrive in the stadium of... He doesn't thrive in a stadium full of 20,000 people. That's what Biden... That's what Binder says. For DeSantis supporters, there's another caveat. History often hasn't been kind to early presidential front runners. Just ask any popular former Republican governor, Scott Walker of Wisconsin. He peaked early before 20, the 2016 election and was knocked out of the race by Trump himself. So that's hilarious. So the thing is that, yes, he needs to focus on winning. He needs to focus on winning and he needs to make sure that he wins. If you're focusing on winning, if you make sure that you win, if you make sure to do all of the things that make you win, then you will win. Because Ron DeSantis is, by himself, a very, very good... um, He has a lot of things under his belt, and he can prove that he actually will do something and did do something. So can Trump. He did do something and will do something. With Joe Biden, he will do something, but he might Trump up the stairs before he does that. He might call somebody 
out in, out in the crowd that's already dead, that died a couple weeks prior. He might do all these things that are just like, what the hell are you doing? Hey, 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 were you really going to click off this video before leaving a like and subscribing down below? Wow, so rude.